In my last video, I introduced you to a novel device for penile maintenance. It is driven by radio frequency and helps to maintain the fibroskeleton of the penis. This means that it targets an area of the penis which is crucial for erections and stability. Therefore, it has the potential to counteract venous leakage. Because so far, this kind of erectile dysfunction has been really difficult to treat. In addition to that, I hope that radiofrequency will be able to work its magic in Peroni's disease as well. But so far, we don't have any data on this part. However, since the device can be used at home, it is ideal for keeping the penis in good shape. Because age is not kind to the penis, penile anatomy will inevitably suffer during the aging process. It's not only about blood supply. Also, smooth muscle and collagen will get their share. So, if you want to keep your erections, it's use it or lose it first and foremost. But you will also have to respect the tissues. Be nice to your arteries by not smoking and working out and by eating healthy. Here's the news. It appears that an established dermatological principle for restoring collagen could help you with penile maintenance. A lot of men will experience less erectile hardness after the age of 50. Erectile dysfunction comes creeping slowly. Many men don't take action when this happens, which is a problem. Because severe forms of erectile dysfunction are more difficult to treat. Several regenerative therapies for the penis have evolved during the past years. Shock waves, platelet-rich plasma and now radiofrequency. Looking through the scientific data which have been published on all of these methods so far, one thing becomes obvious. Regenerative therapies work, but they are only effective within certain boundaries. If you suffer from mild to moderate erectile dysfunction, you have a real chance to restore your erectile function as if nothing has happened. If you wait too long and develop more severe forms of erectile dysfunction, you can't hope for that effect then we are talking damage limitation. Radio frequency is a bit different from the other methods because you can do it at home and don't have to go to a doctor's office for treatment. However, having this said, it is very important to keep in mind that erectile dysfunction has many faces. If you suffer from erectile issues, go to your local urologist and get an examination. Radio frequency and other regenerative therapies may not be the right thing for you. But in many cases, it could. So don't start any treatments on your own without asking the experts first. For radio frequency, we have a pilot study on 28 men with organic erectile dysfunction who were treated for two months and then followed for an additional six months. I would like to show you two outcome measures. The IIEF-5 is the International Index of Erectile Function. Five questions, five answers, 25 points max. So if you get something between 22 to 25 points, then you are fully potent. Anything between 18 to 22 points is a mild form of erectile dysfunction. As you can see, the men in this pilot study started out with a score of 16.79. This represents moderate erectile dysfunction. After 8 treatment sessions, their scores rose to 23.36 points. So they went from moderate erectile dysfunction to potency after 4 weeks. After 3 months, they reached their maximum with 24.57 points and remained fully potent for the rest of the observational period. Let's have a look at another measure. The erectile hardness score assesses penile rigidity. If you look at the maximum scores, those are represented by the dark brown areas. Dark brown means the penis gets completely hard and fully rigid. None of the participants scored in that area at the start of the study. After one month, 28% of the participants reported fully rigid erections. And after eight months, more than half of the participants had regained unrestricted potency. I think these are very encouraging results. But keep in mind that this is a pilot study. Pilot studies only look at feasibility and effects in a small group of participants.
Now that we know that the method is likely to work, larger studies are needed and also a control group. I think that this device is also very suitable for sham treatment. However, no side effects have been reported so far. And the device is for sale in Europe. I'm sure it will also be available in America. FDA approval has been applied for. I have started to treat selected patients with a device. Next year, I will give you an update on my experience. If you now want to know the name, I will have to disappoint you. Due to legal restrictions for doctors in my country, I must not give you the name of the device nor the manufacturer. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.